Good morning everybody and welcome to another magnificent Monday. Just uh, up here in a little park at the top of uh, the rise at Woody Point and that's the city down there underneath that uh, cloud that you can see on the uh, uh, just on the right of that tree. And there's a pan around the, to the Woody Point Pier. Um, you can just see that it is just a, a beautiful day out here. I don't know for how much longer it's going to last. They're saying the westerlies are going to pick up today. I'm doing weather reports now. Uh, and it's going to get uh, quite cool uh, for, for the next couple of days. I want to ask you a question this morning. How specific do you think God is? Is God specific? It's, a, it's an interesting question because there are those that say that um, no, he's, he's not. And then there will be those on the other end of the spectrum who will say absolutely, totally, he is. Well, let me cite a few examples for, from the Bible to just kind of contemplate that for a second. Was God specific in the building of the sanctuary? To the minute details of even how the candlesticks were to be made and the furnishings to be decorated. So I believe God is specific. He's not a tyrant about it, but he's specific. I think he needed to be. You know, he specifically gave Adam and Eve instructions about what they were to do. And we looked at uh, briefly those, some of those last uh, week in the sixth day of creation, where God told Adam and Eve, told humanity, to take care of the things that he had created, to be the custodian. And they didn't get that right. So God had to be more specific. And he specifically told them that he would fix the problem that they had created. That he would send one who would cleanse humanity. Who would restore them back to where, they, where God had intended them and started them to be. And so they went on a journey. And humanity has been on a journey ever since. Trying to understand how specific God is. And over the next uh, 10 days, we're going to take a specific look at God and the instructions that he, he gave. See, after 400 years in captivity, a fellow called Moses comes along and leads the Israelite slaves out of bondage into the wilderness. And while they're on that journey, they get to the foot of Mount Sinai and there's thunders and rumblings and there's all sorts of things going on. And, and God, through Moses gives the people a specific set of instructions, a specific list on how to live life. And it's 10 simple instructions. And the people hear all this and they say that they'll keep these. And I just want to start with the first one, but at the conclusion of them hearing the 10 commandments given to them through Moses, Moses then goes up to have those commandments etched on stone, or has them etched on stone, and by God's finger, I might add. And when he comes back down, they're having a party, dancing around a golden calf. So from the hearing, they get it wrong. So then they get the stone tablets to reinforce the point and the commandments were written by God's own finger into the, into the tablets. And so, ever since then, we've been trying to find ways to get around them and break them and do our own thing. It's kind of like people dealing with, I guess, the, the specific instructions for health at the moment with the crises we're going through, and then those who feel that there's wriggle room or they want to break the law or whatever. God gave us 10... I won't get into that. It, God gave us 10 specific instructions to have a happy life, a blessed life. And the first one is that God gave the people all of these instructions in Exodus chapter 20 verse 1. I am the Lord your God who rescued you from the land of Egypt, the place of slavery. You must not have any other gods but me. The end. <laughs> people often tell me that the Ten Commandments are a burden or a problem or they're done away with or, or they were nailed to, a, to, a, to the cross. 
So, that means the first one's nailed to the cross. Not applicable. You can have as many other gods as you like. And when we look at the world today, there are many other gods in our lives, aren't there? You know, who do we put first in our first thoughts? Is it God or is it our job, our finances, can even be our health, somebody in our life, our family, even ideology, even the way that we view things or what we hold precious and dear can be a God before God. And God simply says, have no other gods before me. I am your God. Full stop. Another thing I want you to notice as we go through the Ten Commandments is they're not up for debate. They were never voted on. Yes, God is a dictator. And I mean that in the most positive way. He's the one who knows us the best. He knows what's best for us. And he is not out for his own self-interest. Dictators that we know are always out for their own self-interest. God wrote down his instructions. They weren't up for debate. debate. Adam and Eve, Moses, the Israelites, you and I didn't get to vote on them. God just put them there and said, do you love me enough to keep them? Short answer is maybe we not um, we don't love him enough. And so that's why God puts it himself at the top of the list. Have no other gods before me. Because all those other gods that you put into your life will let you down and will fail you. In Matthew 22 verse 37, Jesus says, Seek the Lord or love the Lord with all your heart, mind, body, soul and your strength. It's reinforced again in Luke chapter 10 verse 27. Love the Lord your God with your body, with your soul and with your strength and your mind. How do I do that? I think the answer is probably found in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be added to you. My friends, I don't know where you're at today and what God's are pro the priority in your life. And if they are, I just implore you to put them to one side, and get on your knees, and acknowledge the only one and true God who has your best interests at heart. Let's pray together this morning. Father in heaven, we just want to acknowledge you as our creator, as the God who loves, the God who cares, the only one, Lord Almighty. Lord, we just pray this morning that we do a better job yesterday, today, than we, than we did in, in the way we displayed worship to you. Lord, if we have other gods in our lives that have put, gone in, in front of you or have priority over you, we just pray, Lord, that you help us to, to throw them out of our lives or to put them into the place where they need to be. Lord, help us to acknowledge you as our, our only God and creator. And Lord, as we go about this day, help us to live that. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, my friends, I will... End this morning with just another view down to Woody Point. I'd turn the other way, but the sun is hugely bright this morning. I hope you have a fantastic day. And may you be blessed in it as you bless others in it. And until we see each other tomorrow, take care and God bless.